Okay, so I just wanted to quickly demonstrate because we're kind of skipping this step as far as um, having you guys do this, but I wanted to quickly illustrate how to apply motion capture data to a existing rig in Maya. So I have this rig. This is roughly the Atom model from Unity's uh, real-time movie demo that they released, I believe it was last year. Um, very cool thing, and they released a low-poly version or less detailed version of a few of the rigs and environments for other people to tinker with. So I took that, exported it out of Unity, brought it into Maya. It had this rig, um, and it works, so that's nice. Uh, but what I want to apply some motion capture data, and so we recorded some motion capture data last week, last week, excuse me, with the Rococo suit. Uh, and if you're interested in the Rococo suit, this is the website. It's a cool thing. That's relatively cheap mocap. Um, so we have a bunch of takes, and I'm going to bring one of those in. So I'm just going to go to File, Import, and navigate to where I saved the motion capture data. And the one that I'm going to use is this one. Okay, unrecognized file type. Perfect. So um, what you need to do is go to Windows, Settings, Preferences, Plugin Manager, and search for FBX and make sure that the FBX Maya bundle is loaded in auto load. Once you have that, then you can import the FBX data. So import. It'll take a second and you'll see a new skeleton rig come in. There it is. Okay, I'll select it so you can kind of see it stand out. Uh, I will also isolate selected so we can just worry about this. Um, so you'll notice that the timeline turns red, and that's because this recorded uh, keyframes at about 100 frames a second. So it's way more information than we need, but we'll get to that later. Uh, but if we just hit play, we can see the motion capture data. Okay, playing back normally in real time. I am going to change my frame rate to 24 frames a second. Um, here we go. You see, it's kind of, it's basically, it's a robot waking up. Uh, and it goes on for 900 frames or so. So that's what we're going to apply to our robot. The first thing we need to do, though, is we need to tell Maya what this motion capture data is and, and what the skeleton is. So we've got this human IK pane. And um, this, is the, uh, this is the actual robot. We'll, I'll talk about what this is here in a second. But if we go to none... We want to create a character definition. And it's going to give us this window um, and all of these bones. These are the bones that Maya is expecting to see for a character. And these are the bones that we have. And what we need to do is tell Maya, like, equate them. We need to say, OK, so it's looking for a hip bone. So we double click on hips. And then we click on the rig's hip bone. You see that turns green. So it knows that, oh, OK, that's the hip bone. Uh, and then we do that for the whole rig. The nice thing about Rococo is that you can export a Maya human IK rig, so it's exactly what Maya is expecting, and it makes this part really easy. So I'm just going to quickly go through this. The spine is there, and then there's actually some more spine segments. So you can get pretty detailed uh, rigs working with this, get a lot of control. The head will be this top one. And then we've got some shoulder uh, controls. And we'll go with the arm. And that's that one. And then the hand is that one. We'll do the legs. You'll also notice that I do one side, and it automatically does the other side. Uh, and that's because this name is rigged well. And it's in uh, a symmetrical position. You'll notice that it's also in a T pose. That is important for this. Um, so it goes relatively quickly. Obviously, the more bones you have, the longer this will take, but um, it's a quick process. And the last thing we need to do is the hands. We didn't capture any motion, cap any motion capture hand data because we don't have the gloves yet, um, but I'm still going to bind them. So uh, for that, we just go into this hand detailed view. And this is the fastest way that I have found to do this is you can select the bone and then right click to assign the selected bone instead of double-clicking and then selecting the bone. So it's just another way to do it. 
um, and using the down arrow you can move down the hierarchy so I can move down the hierarchy right click assign selected bone move down the hierarchy right click assign selected bone and then you just do that for all of the fingers and it goes pretty quick Um, if the bone, if the definition doesn't work, these will, won't turn green. They'll turn either red or yellow if they're a little red if it doesn't work, and yellow if it's slightly misaligned. Um, but again, because this was exported um, with Maya settings, everything is working very smoothly. And that's the last one. So you see everything is green. We have the validation status green check mark. Uh, we're good to go. Uh, it can also be nice to rename the character. So we'll just call it mocap, just for simplicity. OK, so now Maya knows what the skeleton is and where all the bones are uh, that it's looking for. So now what we need to do is link the two. And the way that that works, this is the easiest part, is we select our um, character bone or skeleton and in the human IK pane we go and select that and then the source we say is going to be our mocap data. Just going to think about it for a second. Uh, you see there's a little bit of an offset so we're just going to take the character's root bone and move it down so the feet are back on the floor. Okay and now I'm going to turn off x-ray joints, hit play, and you can see that our character is doing the exact same thing as our motion capture skeleton. So that's the first step is just getting that in and now the character is animated. Now if you want to do additional uh, adjustments to the character, to the motion capture data, you can. And that's, uh, that's what I'm going to do next. So the first thing we're going to do is once we have it kind of all laid out in the way that we like it, okay, everything's working, there's not, no weirdness happening. Um, is with the character selected, I'm going to click on this menu, which doesn't look like a menu, but it is a menu, and I'm going to bake the animation to the skeleton. So instead of just referencing that motion capture data, it's going to apply that and make it real keyframes on the character's skeleton. Uh, so I'm going to bake that. It's actually going to go through the whole animation. Um, you know, you'll see it play back as it's baking everything. So once it does that, uh, we don't need our mocap uh, data anymore, so I'm just going to delete it, just get it out of the scene. You can also throw it on a reference layer and, and hide it or you know whatever you want to do. <clears throat> uh, so we have that. And I'm going to expand out this graph editor and select the skeleton. And if I hold down shift and click on this little plus box, it'll show all of the uh, graphs for all of the bones that are animated. And as I zoom in here, you can see there is a keyframe on every frame. There's a lot going on uh, because that's what the motion capture suit records. And you can see some, some bounciness. So if you wanted to smooth these out, you can get in there and do that. But the first thing I'm actually going to do to smooth this out, select everything. Whoops. Yeah, select everything, there it goes, and go to Curves and Key Reducer Filter. And you can actually preview this effect, but it's just going to get rid of all the keyframes it doesn't really need. Um, and you can be more specific about it, but these are the settings that I'm going to use. And Precision is 1, Apply and Close. And that will, I'll, like, I'll, I'll undo it and then redo it so you can see the difference here. It'll take a second because it's a lot of keyframes. There you go. So that's the before. And there's the after. So the curves don't change shapes, but there's far fewer keyframes to worry about, um, which is great because then if you want to make an adjustment, you have far fewer things to worry about. Uh, and let's say at the beginning here, the beginning of this animation, Okay, let's say we don't want him to move at all until about here. 
I'm just looking. Okay. Yeah, let's say right about here. Then what we can do is we can open up the dope sheet. Again, shift click this plus to show all of the bones. Okay. And I'm going to frame it up so we can see everything. And I'm just going to drag it across and select all of the keyframes before the playhead and hit delete. And now it's not going to move at all until that moment. And let's say, for instance, we don't want the legs to move until he actually starts moving them like here. Then we can say, go to like that frame. I'm going to select the, the top leg of that hierarchy or the top bone of that hierarchy. Again, expand it out so I select all the bones underneath it. Select all the keyframes before that. Hit delete. And now, see that leg doesn't move. The hips are still moving, so we may want to do the same thing with the hips. Uh, but that's how you can make those adjustments. And you, again, you have full control over the graph editor, so you can do whatever you need to from that point. But that's, that's the quick and, and dirty of getting motion capture data into Maya and then applying it and adjusting it. So was uh, useful.